I think against the backdrop of a decade, by the way, in which living standards haven't budged, uh, we've got about, you know, we're predicting that there'll be about 23 million people in this country that aren't earning an income that allows them to afford the basics for a decent quality of life. We know that the cost of living crisis is biting really hard. I don't think the Chancellor did enough, quite frankly. Um, yes, we saw the increase in the national living wage, but the whole idea of a living wage is that you're supposed to be paid a wage that reflects the true cost of living. And £9.50 an hour doesn't. So it doesn't help there. There were measures that tried to help those on low income. But, you know, the analysis that has been done suggests that because the government chose, and it was a political choice, let's, forget, let's not forget, to cut universal credit by £20, actually three quarters of the people on universal credit are going to lose more from that cut than they're going to gain from the measures in the budget. And for me, the real sting in the tail is that there are three million people not in work, a lot of, the, you know, that's not their fault, they're not in work. And in that budget, the government chose to do nothing. And the thing I'm struggling with is why cut the tax on bankers that cost £4 billion and then leave 3 million people to languish? So, you know, the Chancellor was upbeat. I love optimism. I'm an optimist. But it can't be based on hot hair. And I think for a lot of people, that optimism will feel incredibly out of touch. Thank you.